We're waiting for the next slide. Jesus Loves Me, we will have Jesus Loves Me by Danielle Altangan on the flute and Sophia Galvan on the piano. got a flute player in the house. Praise Next, God. we're going to have Victory is Mine, and that is going to be Ashi on the piano. I know you all are so used to him playing the saxophone. Well, he has another talent. He plays piano thanks to his grandma. So Ashi is going to play the piano. I'm going to play saxophone. Sophia is going to play the recorder. And Danielle is going to play flute. Victory is mine.
so glad they let me play with them. All right, next we're gonna have Hazelyn, and Hazelyn Carter is going to play, sing. <laughs> She's like, I'm not gonna play anything. Hazelyn is going to sing, I Need You to Survive with Sophia on the piano. Thank the good Lord for these boys uh, and girls. I thank you all. God has given them talents, and we have to make sure that they use those talents in the church. Because if they don't use it in the church and use it for God, the devil is going to just get them. And we want to make sure that we always have a platform for them to use their talents in the church. So thank you all so much. I 
survive. We want everyone to survive. We're going to ask that you stand for our hymn. Amaze, sin, grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Oh, I was yes, Lord. Was lost. Oh, but now I'm found. Was lost. Yes, I was. Father God in heaven, it's in the name of Jesus of Christ we come. God, we thank you for another privilege. Thank you for another chance. Thank you for another opportunity. Just to come before your presence. Just to be blessed by you. Just to be in your midst. For God, we are thankful for it. We realize that we are unworthy. We realize that we've fallen short and messed up. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless us today. Forgive us for our sins. Forgive us, Father God, for continuing to do the wrong things. Bless us today, Father God, that we will hear from you. We thank you, Father God, as we repent. You continue to bless us. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless us in this room and all over this world. Bless that your word will go forth that lives will be changed. Hope will be renewed. Situation will be made different. Marriages will be spared. Youth will be encouraged. Lord, we thank you now. We thank you, Father God, that your word will go forth. That old habits will be rolled away. Old burdens will be thrown away. And we will be better than we were when we got here. And Lord, we ask you to keep the glory, all the honor and all the praise. Allow us to be beneficiaries of your many blessings. It's in the strong power, anointed name of Jesus the Christ we pray. And we ask it all. Amen and thank God. Praise 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 God.
praise God. Praise Him. Praise Him. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Praise God. We've come to praise the Almighty God today. Hallelujah. We've come to praise, to praise God. Hallelujah. Let's look at Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24. We will be reading verses 19 through 24. The pericope begins in verse 13. We'll be reading verses 19 through 24. Luke chapter 24, verses 19 through 24. The book is St. Luke, the chapter is 24. The verses are 19 through 24. When you found it, you would have discovered these words. And he said to them, what things? So they said to him, the things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who, had, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and the people, in how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. Indeed, besides all this, today is the third day since these things happened. Yes, and certain women of our company who arrived at the tomb early astonished us. When they did not find his body, they came saying, that they had also seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. In wow. certain of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said. But him they did not see. I want to talk talk about in the, in the form of a question, have you seen Jesus? Have you seen Jesus? Have you seen Jesus? Throughout the world in which we live, people run to be in the presence of celebrities. They, they run to take pictures with them. They run to get their signatures and autographs of those celebrities. They look for a way to be seen with them. Many all over this world take our, lung, our children on our shoulders, on our hip, and we look to just touch a celebrity. Many times when little children are going through cancer treatment and they want to encourage them, make a wish foundation, always ask them, what are your top three celebrities that you would love to meet? Well. Those children always would give them a list of the celebrities that they want to be in the presence of, even if they're in their dying moment because they want to see their celebrity. My question this morning, have you seen Jesus? All right. My question this morning, has he had an impact on your life? Have you seen Jesus? My question this morning is just to stop by on my way to the rapture to ask one question. Have you seen Jesus. Yeah. And if you have seen him, well. 
Did you recognize him? And since you have seen him, you ought to recognize him. That brings us to the text this morning. The text this morning, this pericope begins in verse number 13 of Luke chapter 4. And when you look at this pericope, this is post-resurrection stuff. It is after God had raised Jesus from the dead, and then the women went to anoint his body. You know, we get excited about uh, Resurrection Sunday, and we ought to, but there ought to be something about after the resurrection that impacts our lives, that makes a difference in our lives. And if the resurrection is just another story, then you need to see Jesus. When we look at verse number 13 and we move to verse number 24, we find out that the the author, Luke, Dr. Luke, penned these words. He talks about two men, two disciples of Jesus that was on the road to Emmaus. They were on the road to this village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. And as they traveled, the Bible says, the text declares that they were sad. They were despondent. They were dejected. And they were disappointed. They were disappointed because they had hoped that Jesus would be the one. And now Jesus is dead and gone. They're looking down. They're, They're talking and they're having conversation. And as they're having conversation, there's a man who greets them. They're on their way to this village of of Emmaus, and as they were walking this seven-mile trip, they talked together about the things that had happened. And let me tell you, first of all, you need to understand, the death of Jesus and the resurrection of Jesus was worth talking about. I want to tell you, I want to tell you, uh, whoever you've been talking about and whoever you've been talking to, the death of Jesus, the resurrection of Jesus is worthy of talking about. I I want to tell you, I want to tell you, if you if you hadn't talked about it lately, if you hadn't talked about it in weeks, (laughs) it's near time. Matter of fact, it is time that you talk about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. So these two men walk in this Emir's road. They're they're sad. They're having conversation. Verse number 15 says that while they conversed, while they conversated, and while they reasoned this thing out, they were walking along the road conversating. Let me just share with you today that you ought to have some conversation. (laughs) Uh, about how Jesus was misused. (laughs) You ought to have conversation about how the authorities killed Jesus. You ought to have some conversation every now and then uh, of how they took Jesus from one place to the other. (laughs) You ought to have some conversation today. If you're rearing children, you ought to make sure you talk to those children (laughs) about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. So as they walked, as they conversated, up shows Jesus. The text declares that Jesus himself shows up. Have you ever been talking about somebody? And all of a sudden, they just appear? The question is, does your conversation change? (laughs) Or you keep on talking? (laughs) The question today is, when you're talking about somebody, you and your friend, you and your wife, you and your husband, you and, you and your girl, you and your boy, just simply having a conversation, but you're talking about a third person. You see, young people, when, when, when you, you are talking in first person, you're talking about yourself. When you're talking in second person, you're talking about the person you're talking to. And when you're talking in third person, you're talking about a person that you're not talking to, but a third person is not or uh, may be on the scene. So they, they talk about this great happening 
this great thing, one of the greatest, matter of fact, the greatest event to ever take place in man's history, they are talking about the death of Jesus Christ. But they have problems. <laughs> they are disciples, but they have problems. They are, they are living for the Lord, but they got problems. I want to ask you today, are you living for the Lord with problems? <laughs> I dare not take a poll today because if I asked the question today, everybody in the room would possibly say, I'm living for the Lord, but I do have problems. Uh -huh. All right. Do you have any problems? Do you have any issues? Yes, do you have anything that you're trying to struggle to or struggle through? Are there any things that have gotten you focused and off course? And some of us have gotten off course with God. So they walk this Emmaus road in, in Luke chapter 24. And they are disciples of Jesus. They had been with Jesus. They had talked with Jesus. But they are miserable. They are in disappointment because Jesus is now dead. Well. Jesus is dead. Yes, According to them, Jesus is dead. Jesus shows up on the scene. He draws near to them. And he began to go with them. He began to walk along beside them. Have you seen Jesus and didn't recognize him? Is Jesus the guy that's standing on the curb asking for a quarter? Is Jesus the guy standing at the red light? Well, I will say this. Jesus is not the guy at the corner of the Beltway in Fondren. That's not Jesus. Let me, let me tell you, let me tell you why I know it's not him. It's because he's the only man that has a sign that says cancer for the last 12 years. And he's still walking around. And he's still dragging it. And some days he dragged that feet and the next day he doesn't. I'm going to tell you, he's not Jesus because the fact of the matter is he has a beard that's down here. And he's still getting around the same way he was getting around 12 years ago on the same corner. And every time I pull up to the corner, he, he throws up that side, hey, bro, hey, bro, hey, bro, hey, bro. That one's not Jesus. It's Jesus the person that knocked on your door and asked for a piece of bread and you didn't recognize him. Have you seen Jesus? Or is Jesus the person that's down on their luck and you would help them if you could trust him? Is Jesus the person that needs, needs to know something about the word and you just don't have time? Have you seen Jesus? So they, they walking on the road, Jesus draws near to them and God restrained their eyes. He he restrained their seeing. He don't let them see Jesus for who he is. Have you ever seen Jesus and, and didn't see him for who he is? Well, because as we follow down through this text, you will find out that they considered him a good prophet. And many of you have been told that we like Jesus. We, we enjoy Jesus. We really like Jesus. But he was just a good prophet. Well, I want to tell you today, he's not just a prophet. He's not just a good man. He's our Lord. He's our Savior. He is our God. So their eyes were restrained, and they did not know him. Let me just ask you, what's it, what is it in your life that restrains you, that hinders you from seeing Jesus? Is it your personal failures? Is it your personality? Is it what people have done to you? And let me tell you, if somebody has done something to you, you're better off just forgiving them and walking away and leaving it alone. Stop giving people a piece of your mind. Stop telling people off and stop shutting the door in their faces simply because it's better to forgive them and go ahead and release yourself from bondage. Because when you hold somebody in jail, you got to stand there and hold the key to make sure they don't get out. It's better to forgive them and just move on. So what is it? What is it restraining you? What is it stopping you 
from really, really seeing Jesus. I, 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 believe, I believe that many folk who've been in church for years have not really seen Jesus. People who have come for the wrong reasons have not seen Jesus. People who look, al- look around for others have not seen Jesus. People who have the bad attitudes have not seen Jesus. Because when you see him, your actions reflect that you are different. So here they are. They are restrained. They don't know him. They don't see him for who he is. Verse 17 says that, and he said to them, what kind of conversation y'all having? What are y'all, what are y'all talking about? I mean, anybody ever walked up on you and asked you, hey, what you talking about? And you, you quickly want to say, none of, none of, none of, I wasn't talking to you. Matter of fact, I wasn't talking to you. I was talking about you. Jesus walks up, and, and that's the situation for sure. They are talking about Jesus and what has happened to him. What kind of conversation are you all having? He asked the question, what, what are you talking about? Y'all talking to one another. And as they talked and as they walked, the Bible says that they were sad. Uh-huh. Their friend, their Lord, is now dead. They're walking and they're talking and they have become sad. Verse number 18 says it like this. Then one who whose name was Cleopas, answered and said to him, now he got jokes. He asked the question, are you the only stranger? Are you the only stranger in all of Jerusalem? And have you known the things that have taken place, which there have taken place in these last three days? In these days, have you not known? He asked him, have you been on a rock somewhere? Where have you been? I mean, everybody all over town knows. Everybody throughout Jerusalem knows. Everybody who walked this Emmaus Road knows. Where have you been? Jesus investigates in, in verse 19. He, he says, then one of them named, named Cleosin in verse 18, and then verse 19, he said to them, what things? Now Jesus got jokes. What thing? What, what, what are y'all talking about then? And tell me, as you're talking, what things are you talking about? So he asked them, what things? What things? In verse 19, what things? So they said to him, the things concerning Jesus, the same Jesus of Nazareth. You see, a lot of people's name is Jesus. A lot of people's name are Jesus. But you have to declare the Jesus of Nazareth. We're talking about the Jesus of Nazareth. We're talking about this thing that has taken place to Jesus of Nazareth. Then they go ahead and, and, and brag on him. They say to him, the things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, and they speak in the past tense. Is God active in your life today? Is God present with you today? Is God using you to the best of your ability today? Are you making excuses why you should not do what God has called you to do? Are you making excuses? Oh, I got a headache. Don't you know people got more than headaches? Don't you know, oh, I'm an introvert. Don't you know that introverts get happy at certain times? Don't you know that introverts have one thing, at least one thing, that really turns them on? I submit to you, it ought to be Jesus. (laughs) What's what's your excuse as, as to why you're not presenting him and why you're not walking with him and why you have not given your all to him? Is it because you're a cop out? Cop outs got excuses. Is it because you are a dropout? Dropouts are those who quit. Is it because you are a sellout? 
Sell out of those who would do anything for a piece of money. I suggest to you today, you must be an all out if you're going to walk with Jesus. You must get to a point in your life where you just say, Lord, here I am. I'm going to lay myself before you. God, I've decided that what I've been doing is wrong, what I've been thinking is wrong, how I've been acting is wrong. And Lord, I'm just going to stretch out on you. I'm going to trust you. Have your dreams been shattered? Have your dreams been, been, been discarded? Are people just mistreating you just because you are you? Or are you your biggest problem? Somebody ought to testify this morning that I just keep right on getting in the way. I just keep getting in the way. And every time God is looking to bless me, I keep right on getting in the way. Because all of us in this room got a big IQ number, and we all are smart, and we can handle this thing on our own, and we have the audacity to God, and sometimes we will even tell God, God, you sit over here, and I can handle this from here. I can deal with it from here because I can do it because I'm smart enough, because I'm degreed enough, because my experience have been enough. But let me tell you, you got to walk with Jesus. And when you walk with Jesus, Jesus ought to find you talking about Jesus. Is Jesus finding you talking about him? Or are you spending more time talking about them? Let me just share with you. People who, who talk about ideas are going places. People who talk about people are going nowhere. People who talk about doing things are going places. People who talk about other folk are going nowhere. So don't you join in with the party of talking about other folk and spend your time and you look back over your life and you in a worse position you were in five years ago. Are you in a better position today than you were last year this time? Six months this time? Is your mind clearer? Are you walking with Jesus? Have you spending time with him? There, there, was a stint, there was a stint of time, probably about three years, that I approached people of this church and I said to them, if you're going to trust God, trust him with your money. I almost slapped somebody when I said that. I, it, people act like I just, was just haul off and slapped the whole congregation. If you're going to trust God, you got to not only trust him with your stuff, you got to trust him with your money too. And I said to them, I said to some of you that if you trust God for six months with tithes and offering, give faithfully with tithes and offering for six months. If you, your life is not better at the end of those six months, I will give back everything that you have given to the church. Well. Not one single person in a matter of 18 years have come back and said, my life was worse since I've been tithing. Since I've trusted God, since I've been walking with him. You know, because it takes, it takes some trust to give God what he's asking for. It takes trust. You see, we can trust him with our time. We can trust him with our talent. But when you talk about trusting with our treasure, something wrong with that there preacher up there. I knew he wasn't bald head for nothing. We have to understand, when we walk with Jesus, not only do we talk about him, we brag on him. Look at how they bragged on him. Verse 19, they said, who was a prophet, mighty in deed, mighty in word, and he was mighty before God and people. When we, when we get to know Jesus, he's able to give us favor. And we want favor. Stop praying for money. Stop trying to hit the lotto to make it, make it better. Because many lotto winners have gone, on, have, gone, have gone on to die within three years. Or kill themselves or somebody took over. Let me tell you, ask God for favor. Ask God for favor because God knows more what you need than you know what you need. God knows. See, you think you need money. You think you need this. But you can have money and have no health and strength, and you have nothing. The Rockers fellas can tell you. 
Elon Musk is going to have to tell you one day that regardless of how much money I have, if I don't have my health and I don't have the blessings from God, money means nothing. Now, let me tell you what I didn't say. I didn't say that you ought not have money. For the Bible says money answers all things. Money answers all All things, but when you come to a point, as Matthew says in Matthew chapter 6, as Matthew says, when you come to the point where you put money before God, then your life is going to be miserable from now on. You can't can't make it just because you got money. Man, the other day tried to buy an election. He only asked for 11,000 and so many odd votes. And he thought that his money could buy the election. Let me share with you. God is yet in control. And as God is in control, he knows who needs what and when we need it. He knew we couldn't do four more years like that. God knew it. God knew it. God knew it. God knew that we just couldn't do four more years back to back like that. I mean, God... Thank God for, y'all be, y'all be thanking God. You all say, God, I thank you. God, I praise you. God, I magnify you. God, I lift you up. God, you see more than we can see. And there are some of us who thought we needed four more years of that. They say that Jesus was a prophet. It says that Jesus was mighty in his deeds. He went about doing good. We ought to be do-gooders. We ought to go about doing good in our works, in our deeds. We ought to go about doing good. He says that he was mighty in his deeds and his word. How strong is your word? Do you have a word? I mean, I mean, my granddaddy used to shake a hand and get a whole car. Now folk will sign on the dotted line and, and be lying while they're signing. I mean, granddaddy would shake a hand and say, I'm going to pay you every month. And he walked away with a brand spec new car. Now folk can read these, these stacks of papers and or, or look like they're reading it. And then they will sign it with no intentions of paying for anything. And then they will come to your house and lie to you and will sign a piece of paper. How good is your word? Jesus had a good reputation, and he had a good word. What have you promised lately that you didn't keep? What have you said you would do and you didn't do? What have you said that you would not do and ended up doing it? How good is your word? How good are your deeds? How how much can people depend on your deeds, your dealing? And he says that his word was good with God. His deeds were good with God. You know, I, I've just stopped trying to pump and prime people to do the right thing now. And when they tell me their excuse, I say, well, if it's good enough for God, it's got to be good enough for me. If, if, if it's good enough for God, if it's good enough for your relationship with God, if it's good enough for your fellowship with God, it has to be good enough for me. I'm not called to be your police officer, God watching. He, he's omnipresent. He's omniscient. He's omnipowerful, omnipotent. He is God all by himself. And he's a sovereign God. He allows us to run and do our stuff as long as he allows us to. And then when it's over, he said, the end. When he's done, he's done. When he's through, he's through. When it's over, it's over. And the whole world knows it is over. He goes on, they go on, Cleopas goes on and he says, he's mighty in deed, he's mighty in word, and he's mighty in deed and word before God and with all people. Stop saying that people don't matter. Stop saying sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. By the mere fact of you making that statement, you're already hurt. And you're telling people you're hurt. Words matter. People matter. And how they handle things matter. And it affects us, even Christians. We are affected by what people say. What people do. And how they handle us. 
So that, that little statement, I mean, how many of you grew up saying that sticks and stones may break my bones, but words may never hurt me? Let me tell you, words stop you from getting jobs. Words stop you from getting paid. Words stop you from getting that new house, a new apartment. Words stop you from getting the car. And it's whether the words are written or spoken. Let me, let me give you an example. A 5.25 beacon score is just a word. You can't get brother very much like that. We can't get very much with a 5.25 beacon score. You, you, can't, you, can't get, you can't get too much going on if it's a word. And words make a difference. So stop saying that words don't matter and go ahead and say things and do things that, di that does matter. Those things must matter to God and to people. God wants you on top of things. God wants you to be the best. God wants you to have all the money you want. But when he give it to you, what you going to do with it? Every time a person tells me, you know, Pastor, when my ship comes in, I'm going to pay this church off. I just sit, Brother Dixon, and Lixon, and, I, and, I, and this is the first thing coming to my mind, Brother Carter. If you just pay 10% now, I'll be satisfied. <laughs> oh, when my ship come in, I'm going to pay this church off. I'm going to just bless this church. Well, just give 10% or more now, and God will bless the church. And when your ship come in, keep giving 10% or more. And watch what God does. God can do more with 10% or more than he can do with your vain promises. Focus. Intent. Life is something that he focused on with these two men. They said that he was, he was a mighty, he was a prophet, he was good in word and deed. And then they go on to, to, to recount to Jesus what happened to Jesus. Then you have to recount to Jesus what happened to Jesus. Let me just share with you. God loves to hear his word. God loves to hear his word. And when God hears his word, he responds to his word. So in your prayer time, in your reading the word time, read it out loud. God loves to hear his word. So when we pray, we ought to pray God's word. In the midst of our trouble, we need to remind God, God, you say it. In your word that, that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. God, you said in your word that regardless of what I'm going through right now, you have all wisdom. God, you said in your word that, and we know that God makes all things well. He takes the worst of things and makes them the best of things. Stop complaining to God. Just talk to God about what he said in his word. Therefore, when we read the word, we ought, to, we ought to recite the word. We ought to put the word in our spirit. The psalmist said, I want the word in me so it will keep me under control. I can tell which members have the word. <laughs> because what's in them comes out of them. When I squeeze a lemon, I don't get apple juice. When I squeeze the lemon, I get a lemon juice. And I can tell real well what you've been going through and how much time you have spent in God's word. God has a way of revealing to the best of us what's in his word. In verse 20 it says, do you, do you not know how the chief priests and the rulers, our rulers, our rulers delivered him to be condemned? This innocent man, Jesus, was delivered up to be condemned. This innocent man, Jesus, I told you on last Sunday that they chose an extortioner. They chose a terrorist. They chose Barabbas over Jesus, and they convicted him of a crime he had not done. Some of you in this room can, can identify with me. Because if you haven't been convicted, some of your family members have. Some of your friends have. Some of your neighbors have. Have you ever been pulled over because you were driving while? Yeah. You understand with me, don't you? He was condemned. He was sentenced to death in a, in a crime he had not committed. And guess what? 
there were no protesters there. There were no one saying, don't kill him. His family members, his disciples, and the disciples got so scared, they ran and hid. They said, I don't want to be next. <laughs> Mary crying for her child. But, but the disciples, the Bible said they ran and hid. And old cousin Peter just wasn't having it that day. They caught Peter on the wrong side of the bed. Peter said, now look, I'm going to tell you something I done told y'all. Don't be blaming that I'm with him. And then he starts speaking in other tongues. So he says, he says this, this, these chief priests and our rulers delivered him up to be condemned. And let me tell you, these were not peons that killed Jesus. These were the abbots. You'll get that when you get home. They, they killed Jesus. Those who were in charge killed Jesus. It says our rulers killed him, and, and they crucified him. They condemned him, and they crucified him. It is the greatest story to be ever told in the fact that Jesus Christ was condemned of a crime he didn't commit, and he was crucified by a mob. We think we got gangs now. We, we, we think we got boys, boys and girls do, do crazy things to get involved in a gang. Let me tell you, I think the cliques in the church is just a sophisticated gang. <laughs> when we got cliques, we just in a gang. We, we can't do without the other one, and we don't like this one because of something, and, and we don't like how she look. We don't like how she stand. We don't like his mannerism. We don't like his color. We don't like because he's doing this and that, and he think he's something. He always asking questions in Bible study, always asking questions in Sunday school. He think he knows it all. And it's because we are the mediocre ones. And excellence will always outshine mediocrity. Excellence will always shine a spotlight on those who are mediocre. It's when others are getting things done that others will begin to talk about them. Verse 21, they come to the conclusion that we were hoping that he was our redeemer. We saw all the things he did. We watched him from day to day, and we were hoping that he was the redeemer. He was the one that would buy us back from Israel. We were hoping that he was the Messiah, and here it is now the third day, and he's still dead. That's how gossip get out. They had already come. See, gossip gets out when they come to a conclusion that they don't really know about. They said, here it is, the third day, and he's already dead. Here it is, the third day since all this took place, and nothing has happened. Then they go on and say, but there were some certain women. There were some certain women, some women in our company, he said, who arrived early, and they astonished us. They blew our mind. You see, the, the authorities had already contemplated a plan, and the plan was that the disciples would steal Jesus overnight. And so they put guards there, and the guards were to watch overnight because it would be a deadly thing for the guards if somebody came and stole Jesus' body. When Mary, the other Mary, got to the sepulcher, when they arrived there, and they're telling the story. They're just telling the story. When they arrived there, when they, they saw them coming, the angels began to testify. Let me tell you, you ought to be testifying for Jesus. Your life is not the same since you met him. It's not perfect. It's, it's not what you would like it to be. But since I met Jesus, back home, the senior saints would say, it gets sweeter and sweeter round by round. It gets sweeter and sweeter every day. We have to come to a point in our lives where we understand that we ought to be astonished about what Jesus does. Maybe this is not your testimony, but I'm, I'm astonished of Jesus every day I wake up because I didn't deserve to be here. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I did enough at, at six months old to not deserve to be here. And God has spared us. To make it again. He says these women saw angels in a vision and the angels told them that he is alive. Where are their faith? Where, where are the, the fact that, that they ought to trust and believe in what Jesus said? The angels reminded them, don't you remember? 
Don't you remember what he told you? In three days he will rise from the dead. And he got up early that third day. It is real. He just, he got up early that third day. And guess what? He's alive. He's alive. The songwriter said, he lived. He lived. Yes, he lived. He lived. I'm so glad he lived. He, the songwriter that says, ask me how I live, how I know he lives. I know he lives because he's a part of my life. I know he lives because he walks with me. He talks with me. He tells me that I am his own. I know he lives. Don't let an angel tell you he lives. Have it in your heart, in your spirit, the fact that Jesus lives and he lives in me. Finally, in verse number 24. He says, certainly of those who were with us. Now, they already heard the women's testimony. But then they said, certainly of those that, that, that are with us, they went to the tomb. And they discovered it was just like the women had said. My, my, my. They didn't tarnish it. Let me tell you, tell the story. And tell the story right clearly. Tell the story and, and tell it just like it is. Because the important thing is that others see Jesus. When you look at the book of Acts and the disciples are walking and, and, and the Bible declares that they were uneducated men. But one thing the world knew is that they had been with Jesus. Can the world tell that you've been with Jesus? Can the world tell that you've seen Jesus? Can the world tell that your life has changed since you've been with Jesus? When you walk up and they hitting a blunt, do they offer you one? When you walk up and they, they doing it, do they offer you to join them? The world needs to see Jesus in you so much so until your light shine. Yeah, we ought to let our little light shine everywhere, everywhere we go. So when the men arrived at the tomb, they saw the same thing the women saw, an empty tomb. It is empty. He's not there. And they did not see him. My question to you today, have you seen Jesus? Have you seen the same one who died for us? Have you seen Jesus, have you seen Jesus the Christ? Have you seen Mary's oldest child? Have you seen Jesus, the one that was born and laid in a manger in Bethlehem of Judea? Have you seen Jesus, the one who, the one who, who opened blinded eyes, who raised the dead? Have you seen Jesus? Have you experienced him? Have you walked with him? Have you talked with him? The question today is, have you seen Jesus? I'm just talking about the same Jesus. I told you last Sunday, I told you Wednesday night, that men go off to seminary, get all these degrees, spend plenty of money, and they come back to talk about a man in a tree. His name is Jesus. The same man they should have been talking about before they left for seminary. They spent a lot of money just to find out, and I'm guilty also, just to find out it was over 2,000 years ago. That my Lord and your God, Jesus the Christ, I tell you, they took him and they made him carry his cross. He carried his cross up a skull hill called Calvary. And they nailed him to that cross. They nailed him tight. They ribbed him in real well. They killed my Lord and your God. They lifted him above this earth. And Jesus declares in I, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. They lifted him up. The S-U-N refused to shine. The S-O-N was shining. Thank God for Jesus. Let me tell you about Jesus. <laughs> that same Jesus that was walking on the Emmaus Road after the resurrection, they killed him on a skull hill called Calvary. After he was dead, <laughs> they pierced him in his side. Out came blood and water. He's really the one who's come to set us free. Thank you. Jesus died, I tell you. He died on Calvary's hill. He, he died, I tell you. He died on the cross. They, they took him off the cross. They laid him in Joseph's brand new tomb. They, they killed him and laid him in an unused tomb. They killed him and, and laid him in a borrowed tomb. But thank God early, early that third day morning, he got up with all power. 
in heaven and earth in his hand. He got up with all power, every strength in his hand. He got up with all power and strength on heaven and on earth in his hand. Amen. And that same Jesus is present with you today. Yes, sir. And he want to know, have you seen him? Have you seen him? When I came up, there was a, there was a song that, that says, have you seen her? Brother Miles remember that song. He just he just ride and turn the radio up and, yeah. and he the, the songwriter would say, Have you seen her? Have you seen her? The, the, the author would, would be talking about the fact that, that he looked everywhere. He he looked in the park. He he looked in the neighborhood. And now he couldn't find her. He asked the question, Have you seen her? Let me just share with you. Don't for, don't remember her. Just forget about her. Forget about him. My question today, have you seen Jesus? Yeah, he walks with me. Yeah. He talks with me. He tells me that I am his own. He strengthens me. He gives me hope in the midst of my disaster. I'm saying Jesus is a comforter. Jesus is our rock in a weary land. Jesus is the one who keeps us and strengthens us. The door is open. The door is open. The door is open. His name is Jesus. If you've never trusted him, this is your moment. Why don't you try him? I recommend Jesus. The same Jesus who died on Calvary. The same Jesus who hung between two thieves. The same Jesus they laid in a barber tomb. The same Jesus that rose from the dead. The same Jesus that the angel said, he's alive. I submit to you today, he's alive today. He walks with me. He talks with me. And he tells me, I'm his own. The door is open. Will you come? Trust him as your savior. Trust him as your Lord. He's the resurrected Christ. You can see him today, deep down in your heart. Will you bow with me and repeat after me and invite him in? Trust him as the son of God. Just say these words, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. We believe if you honestly prayed this prayer, you're now born again and you're on your way to heaven. And now you have to live a sanctified life. A life where you see Jesus every day and he makes a difference in your life. There may be some who who's listening by broadcast and you're looking for a church home. Inbox us and let us know. We recommend the New Beginning Church in Southeast Houston. We'll be glad to hear from you. If you've received Christ during this broadcast, let us know. We will welcome you to the family and we'll be glad to rejoice with you. When we thank God for who he is and what he's already done, we thank God for Jesus. He is the one who makes a difference in our lives. It is now offering time. It is time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. I say it's offering time, time to give to the Lord. Hallelujah. It's time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand. And you will be served. Raise your hand, please, and you will be served. Raise your hand, and you will be served. We thank God for for the privilege of giving. It's a privilege to give unto the Lord. It's a privilege. And those of you who want to give electronically, you can do so by giving by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. The idea is, as we lift Jesus, he draw all men unto us. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. We need an envelope up here. This guy got a lot of money, so you need to come come give him another envelope. 
He's, he's loaded. Run, run, run up here. This guy up here. He needs an envelope. He needs an envelope. He needs. Come on, Hazlin. You can mail it to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 774-59. P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 774-59. Father God, we thank you for this privilege of giving. We thank you for all that you have done, all that you will do. We thank you, Father God, for income. We thank you for increase. We thank you for money. We ask you to bless us as we come to give unto you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Every day. When I decide to stand and oh, come and happy give. Day. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. When Jesus was. Oh, when he was. Yeah. When Jesus Just to understand. Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for every gift. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. We want to recognize Brother Mark Gibson. Will you stand, Brother Mark Gibson? Um, amen. Uh, Mark and I were junior deacons together at the Holman Street Church. We were junior deacons together. And so, Mark, uh, everybody in this room needs a card from Mark, all right? Everybody needs a card from Mark because he's going to Help you while you're living and help you while you're dead. <laughs> Mark, say hello to us. <laughs> Amen. Thank you so much. Uh, he, has, he is in the process of moving into our neighborhood. He's, he's moving into the neighborhood. And let me tell you, you don't meet many people that can help you when you're living and help you when you're dead. Wow. There's not many like that. I can, I can help you when you're living. When you're dead, you're done. I can't, wow. I can't help you. But... Uh, uh, everybody needs a card from, from Mark. Mark is, is the CEO and, and chairman of Wells Funeral Home. So uh, he's in the neighborhood. He's, he's right down the street. you building right down the street, right down Shure My Road, correct? Right down the street is Shure My Road. He's been in Liberty County for many years, and, and he knew that, that people needed some help over here in Southeast Houston. So he came by to, to, uh, to let you know that he's available. And I want to thank him for, for his even doing his political runs. He came to visit us, and I want to thank him most of all 
because even when he's not in a political race, he's been a friend of this church. Amen. He's been a friend. He's been a friend to this church, and, and every time he comes, he, he puts in a, a nice offering to be a blessing to this church, and I want to thank him for being a friend of mine and a friend of this church. Amen? Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Aaron and Fran are here. Aaron and Fran, you want to stand up and tell us who you got with you there? I know who the talker is, but who's going to talk this time? Your mother-in-law got a name? Your wife got a name? Tell, tell us your wife and mother in law name. I didn't hear you. Okay. All right. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for being a part of our service. I think this is her first time being here. So you should, you should receive a gift bag for being here the first time. And, and please, ma'am, please, sir, fill out a, fill out a, um, a uh, visitor's card. We'll be glad to get in contact with you, see how, see how things are going as you have attended the New Beginning Church. Thank you so much for being here. Aaron, Aaron brought his mother-in-law to church, amen? <laughs> yeah. That says something about the man, if he can bring his mother-in-law to church. Hallelujah, he brought his mother-in-law to church. Amen, thank you so much for, for being a part of our service and, and uh, being with us. Thank you so much, amen. Thank you so much. We, are, we wanna make sure that we continue to lift, lift each other in prayer, continue to, to pray for those who are on our prayer list. As you can see, there are people who need your prayers, and we want to lift them before the Lord. Amen. Let's go to God. Father God, we thank you now for those who we see and those who we don't see, those who we know of and those who we don't. Lord, I ask you to comfort as only you can. Strengthen, Father God. Build them up. Encourage them and watch, with, watch over them. Lord, we thank you for this privilege of praying to you, and we know, Father God, that you are God and you are God alone. You're the greatest doctor we know. You're the greatest lawyer we know, and you're the greatest comforter we know. We thank you now. We bless you. We thank you for blessing these. We pray, Father God, that you continue to bless them to walk with you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 It's it, again. It's good to see our global member, sister, 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 sister Kendall is here. Sister Kendall, thank you so much. And it's good to see. It's good to see Lil Al and and Miss Regina. It's good to see. I, I was working with Lil Al and Big Al, so you tell me which one that one is. <laughs> Amen. So it's good to see Big Al present with us today. Thank you so much for being a part of our service and being here. Everybody make sure that you go by and talk to Brother Mark Gibson. He has hope and strength for you uh, before, before it's over. I, I guess he's going to put that on his card next. I can help you in life and after life. I just gave him a slogan, Brother Miles. He, He's going he gonna, he gonna to eat that up. Uh, let, me, let me help you before life is over and after life is over. Amen. So, so we want to, we want to thank, thank each of you who are coming. Uh, why don't we stand to our feet? Pastor to, Davis. Yes, ma'am. Oh, yeah. Hello, church. I have some awards to give out. Uh, I know you probably did not know, but our youth have been performing for Wheaty which is uh, Dr. Paralee Shiver's organization, and she is always encouraging the youth. And she had a Trailblazers uh, program on March, the, the 31st of March, and we had some youth from the New Beginning Church to perform. And Sister Shivers is giving these little children money. And I just wanted her to know that we're not paying them for the talents that God has given them. And I want the children to know that too, that you're not being paid, but she just wants to encourage you. So I want you to know that you're being encouraged because you're going to have to play for some people and they're not going to give you anything, but you want to just go and play because God has given you that gift and that talent to do that. Do y'all understand before I give y'all these awards? Do y'all understand? I just want to make sure. So it says performance award, 
And this is presented to Braylon Bird uh, of Turning Hearts Youth Ensemble for participating in Wheaties 2022 Trailblazer Award Program providing musical entertainment for the virtual attendees. Thank you for continuing to use your gifts and talents to bless each other. And it's signed Dr. Paralee Shivers and the, the Board of Directors and members of the Weedy organization. So I'm gonna ask Braylon to come up. And he's gonna get his award. We also have an award for so, uh, Sophia Galvan. <laughs> Sophia is on the move playing that piano. And boys and girls, it's always good to be obedient. Whatever, whenever adults ask you to do positive things, just do it. Ashi, because if you do it, you will be blessed. And then we have another one, Hazel, Hazel and Carter. So thank you all so much. And the boys and girls who perform today, she wants to use you all to perform for her next program. That's why I videotaped them this morning and I will be submitting those videos. Thank you so much. Amen. Why don't we stand to be dismissed? I want to thank our youth for carrying our service on today. When we thank them for, for blessing us. And I also want to thank them for being an intricate part of our community. Amen. So thank you so much for, for having your youth to participate outside of these walls. Yes, Let the church yeah. say amen. God. God has. God has spoken. Yes, he has. Let the church, Let the church. say amen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, let the church, let the church. say amen. Let the church, let the church say, say amen. God. He has spoken. Let the church, Let the church say amen. Father God, we thank you. We thank you that we see Jesus. We thank you that in the midst of our disappointing moments, Jesus walked with us. He actually talks with us. And he actually owns us. And he calls us his own. Lord, we thank you, Father God, for the great sacrifice. And we thank you, Father God, for the comfort. We thank you for the reassurance. We thank you for the remembrance. We thank you, Father God, for the rejoicing. Bless us to ever rejoice. Bless us to always walk with you. Bless us to stay focused on you. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, Unto him, the only wise and only true God. Unto him be power, be glory, and dominion. Until we meet again, let us sing together. Amen. Amen. We are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus said, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will come unto me. John 12, 32, you are dismissed.